Hey guys, Sean again. I figured I would show how I sharpen the back of my spine here to turn it into a 90 degree for striking a ferro rod. Um, now over here, I've already done all these. This is a Baco, which is a Mora, but it's stainless. Now who says it has to be carbon steel? It does not, and I'll prove that here in a little bit. Um, so I did that one. I did my very first Mora. This thing is, I don't know, two or three years old. Still a functional knife. Um, I did turn this one into a full uh, convex, though. Um, here's one I got from Jimmy the Fish there. I flattened that one, squared that one up. Here's uh, one of my uh, J Martinis from Finland. Um, the steel on this was really hard. A file would barely cut it. So I ended up using one of my uh, KME uh, Diamond Stones Gold Series. Uh, that took care of it. Uh, I did my other one here. Now these had a really rough Scandi on them. So uh, I convexed them. You can still see part of the Scandi in it. But these things are super sharp. These are, I like these knives a lot. They're comfortable. But yeah. So anyway, let's get started here. Now, you don't necessarily need a vise, but um, you can just baton this into a log and then use a file on it. But since I have a vise, I'm going to use it. So, that in there. Lock her down nice and tight. Now, this is a file I used to use for uh, doing countertops. Um, it's mildly aggressive. We'll just see how it goes here. I might switch to a different one here. This one's a little more aggressive. That's working good. What I'm feeling for is a burr on this side right here. It's not there yet. So Now you see that I'm holding the file sideways against it. Well, the file only cuts on the push stroke. But by going sideways like this, it's still cutting because of the uh, angle of the teeth in there. And I'm resting my finger on the vise here, right in this area, which is giving me control so I'm not going back and forth like this, rounding it out, defeating the purpose. Getting there, get a little burr there, but I want to get one down here. I'll take that out and feel that. As you can see, how much nicer it cleaned it up. You can see the factory spine there. Here it's nice and flat. There's a little burr there, but I'm going to go a little bit further. So I want to show you just how easy you can strike a cheap ferro rod and still get plenty of spark. I think I'm going to step up to this one here just to speed it up. Remember to try and position your hands and your fingers the same way you did before, just to get some stability. Alright, let's try that. There's a little one there. So, all this is, is just a cheap Coglins uh, fire steel. I get these locally, they're like five bucks, four bucks, five bucks, something like that. So let's just try it out. Now that's not quite good enough yet, so we're going to go a little further. There, that feels good. 
That's pretty good. Alright. See how easy that is? I'm barely pressing on it. You know, there's no need to sit there and crank up on it and force it down. Um, that's why I don't like using strikers. Because it takes too much uh, finger strength and you kind of lose your dexterity. If you're trying to direct your sparks, at least like this, it's nice and easy. And you're not kicking your tinder around. Of course, the other technique is pulling back on your ferro rod. So let's check out the stainless one, like I said. Now this is my Baco. It's made by Mora. Stainless steel. So, check this out. I'm not pressing on that very hard at all. So, who says you need carbon steel? Anyway, guys. Oh, well, we might as well check out my uh, J. Martinis here. That one really throws sparks. I got a good burr on that one. But it's a different kind of steel, too. So, Anyway, guys, there you go. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.